So, you want a final boss. The necromancer is just plain boring nowadays. What you need is a new being to be that BBEG. But what would that be? Well, I'm glad you clicked on this video because I want to show you the classic monster in a whole new light. It's quite simple and you don't have to search for its stats in the monster manual. It's just the second monster listed in the book, the Avolith. To understand the drive of a villain, you'll need to know its motive. Due to the detailed nature of the Avalos backstory, it's quite easy to see why they would oppose a party of adventurers. Before the gods ascended to power over the plains, the world was ruled by one race, the Aboliths. They ruled over every mortal in the realm, amassing a great empire built on the backs of slaves. When the gods came, they battled the Aboliths and sent them to the darkest depths, where they would never see the light of day again, leaving them to live with the knowledge of their empire's destruction. Now, this is an interesting backstory. It gives the Abolus a drive to regain what power they once held. They want the land and fear of all mortals again. A goal that could easily get the attention of heroes if a plan were to be put into motion. But what grand scheme could allow them to achieve this goal of theirs? Well, that greatly depends on your personal style. Whether the Abolus creates a cult, a devious weapon, or a cataclysmic series of events. This narrative only requires you to give the Aboleth the upper hand in retaking the world. You might be wondering, how can they achieve their goal when they're locked away? That's because they weren't put in chains or some grand prison. Really? It's more like they've been buried. As the dungeon master, you could use this misconception as a way to deceive the players into thinking that the Aboleth's reach is limited when in reality, they can travel to the surface through secret underwater passageways and use psionics to control creatures in areas that are completely dry. How does the Aboleth convince these creatures to join their cause? Well, if an Aboleth gets a hold of a humanoid's mind, they can, fin they can figure out their greatest desires. They actually pay their workers using the art of illusion. For example, if a fisherman comes into contact with an Aboleth, the creature will know that the fisherman desires gold and wealth, so the Aboleth may send him clams that look like gold, bribing the fisherman to burn a village or some other nefarious tasks. But hey, they get rewarded for the work. On top of using psionics to contact humanoids, Aboleths can give them the ability to breathe underwater. The skin of an Aboleth is covered by a slime. If a creature touches this slime, they will gain the ability to breathe underwater with the slight drawback of not being able to breathe fresh air for a while, or possibly ever again. And, speaking of breathing underwater, let's talk about combat. If your players can't even get that far, how do you even get to the Aboleth, you may ask. Well, since the Aboleth was really sent to the Underdark, you need not worry about setting traps and endless mazes. Really, the Aboleth Lair can be run as a dungeon crawl through a cave. There are plenty of nasty monsters living down there that could certainly pose a challenge, especially if they happen to be working with the Aboleth as an extra layer of protection. You could also add traps or a series of confusing case systems for a layer of gritty realism as they deplete their resources wandering endlessly through the dark. Hopefully, the adventurers will find the Aboleth, and eventually, combat will ensue. The Aboleth might try to enslave the adventurers, three times daily as an action. The Aboleth can enslave a target on a failed DC 14 wisdom saving throw. I recommend bumping it up just a little bit for our BBEG standard, unless your players just have an awful history of die rolls. If the targeted creature fails the save, they are enslaved. The Aboleth can use his psychic drain ability doing 3d6 psychic damage, so if you're a barbarian, watch out. The Aboleth will avoid being out in the open. They would prioritize being underwater at all costs, forcing their attackers to come to them, giving the Aboleth a severe advantage. Not to mention, they have a swimming speed of 40 feet, so your players won't be able to catch them underwater, and most weapons are useless underwater. Spells are as well. Touching the Aboleth will benefit your players for the fight, but they may find it a curse in the long run. If they weren't enslaved, and if they are able to survive underwater, then the Aboleth will fight with its tail and tentacles. On a hit, it slaps you so hard that it knocks the first two layers of skin off right off the target, essentially turning them into a glass frog. 
they will be highly sensitive to the sunlight and have an odd appearance. If the party manages to weaken the Ablith, be sure it has a hiding spot or an underwater labyrinth so that it could hide and recover. And if they manage to kill the creature, well they can't. When an Ablith dies, the body withers away leaving the spirit to travel to the plane of water where it will reincarnate and return to the material plane allowing them to exact their revenge. With this information, you may get an idea of how to place this mighty monster in your Dungeons and Dragons campaign, as well as a motive for your players to stop this monster from taking over the world again, or how to have your players may fall into their clutches by believing in the false gifts they give. I do hope you find this information useful and use it in your future games. Thank you for watching. If you've enjoyed, leave a like, comment what monster I should do next, and pass it along to someone else who might enjoy it. Thank you for watching.